Amen. All right, Acts chapter uh, 4, please. Acts chapter 4. And um, <clears throat> so I see um, this young man right here in the front, in the middle. What's your name? Wayne? Wyatt. Wyatt. Okay, I thought you were new, but you were here last week, right? But I wasn't here last week. I was preaching uh, for Brother Smith, and so uh, glad you came back, amen? Good, good, good. It's good to see Charlie, amen? Were you here last week? Okay, good, good, good. It's good to see you guys, amen? So I've been praying for you, and uh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. All right, Acts chapter 4. Uh, you know, we sing some songs assuming we're all saved, and I hope you are. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I really want to do as a Christian is to enjoy being saved. Uh, don't get tired of it. Don't take it for granted. And one thing that will remind you how good it is to be saved is to tell somebody who's not. And it reminds you where you were and what God did for you. Um, but uh, Acts chapter 4, and hold your place here uh, through the message. We'll keep coming back to this. I will turn to some other places. We'll be in John some and... And uh, I'll probably just read a lot of the verses, but uh, if we could stay here and uh, we'll keep coming back to Acts chapter 4. And verse 12, verse 12, please. John, uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And let's pray. Father, we ask for your blessing and your help. Uh, we thank you for the word of God. And as we just, as we look at each verse, Lord, it's so wonderful and so powerful. We pray that you'd help us to um, rece receive strength and help today. And Lord, if there's anyone that does not know you as Savior, their own personal Savior, God, that they would be saved today. And Lord, for those of us who have been saved recently or for a long time, uh, God, that you would just um, continue to remind us and help us with the truth of thy word and what it means to be saved today. And this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, real quick, uh, so I got a word from the builder that we, I know, I know, I know, uh, he said that we should have our bids, our, our prices by next week. He said, without fail. He's never said that. So, like, I promise you, but I really, really promise you, but I really, really, really promise you. Uh, so he said, without fail. So what that means is if once we get our prices and our, we can go to the bank and ask the bank, so what do you think of these? And, uh, and they'll tell us what they think, and then um, and if we can get everything uh, worked out there, then um, we can go back to the builder and say, you know, we have the loan, and let's go forward. We, we're always going forward, but that'll be the next move, so if you would uh, remember that in prayer as well, please. Okay, uh, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. So think about this, salvation, salvation. Uh, that's, of course, the, the theme of this great verse. Uh, but what is meant by salvation? And again, I know that most of you are saved. Uh, I know most of your testimony, uh, or at least you claim to be, and that's wonderful. But, you know, these great verses are for us to know and to remember. Uh, what is meant by salvation? When, when you're saved, uh, God, yes, God saves us from sin and God saves us from hell. But it's so much more. There's so there's a, there's a lot more to salvation than than I realized when I got saved. I, I just didn't want to go to hell. But man, there's a, there's a whole lot more to salvation. But we have to be saved. A lot of times people want to go on with the other stuff, but they don't settle salvation. We have to be saved. Um, God's salvation is wonderful, and um, it's like a it's 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 like you get a big giant box. But in the box are so many other things, and, and salvation is your, your Christian walk, and, and as you grow as a Christian, you start enjoying and discovering the, the, uh, 
the things w that come with salvation. I didn't know that you could talk straight to God. I didn't know you could you could uh, tell people about being saved and they could get it too. I didn't know. I didn't realize how awesome the Word of God was. Uh, I didn't realize the, the the sweetness of Christian fellowship. And there's so many things that come with salvation. But you have to be saved. You have to start there. You know, we come to Christ, we're lost and broken and beaten down by sin, but God seeks us and God finds us and God restores us to himself and he gives us a new life and a, a great life in Christ and a life that we can, he gives us the power to live a holy life which we did not have prior. When we are saved, we're given back everything that was lost when man fell in, in sin. Uh, you know, sin robbed and took a lot from us, uh, from mankind, but salvation restores it all. And the, the things that Brother Rich is touching on and going through, that's, that's just giving us an introduction of what's coming back. And, and uh, you know, man, God walked with man in the Garden of Eden. He was, I never thought about that. That was the first, uh, he was talking about the different temples in the Bible. That was the first place that God dwelt with man in the Garden. And if you, if you go to the book of Revelation, that's how it's going to be. God's going to bring it all back. Amen. The Bible talks about the tree of life in the midst of the garden. And that tree just, it's taken away. God said, uh, when man sinned, he put the, the angel there and he said uh, to keep man away from the tree of life. He said he can't have it anymore. But if you read about heaven, guess what? That tree's going to be there again. And uh, whew, that's awesome. Uh, hey, salvation is a big, big thing. Um, God's salvation recovers us uh, uh, from our sin and, and, um, and our past and our future. And um, think about this. It, salvation is immediate and eternal. You know, once you're saved, that's it. Uh, it's the salvation of the soul that, that we emphasize so much, but, but God saves your whole life. God saves your whole life, and, and um, um, man, God saves your whole life. I was, I was, um, <clears throat> I told my wife, I, um, I was talking to that guy, Steve, remember he's moving, the, the guy that my neighbor, and he came here and he got saved, Brother Doug and Michelle led them to the Lord, and, and uh, I was visiting with him yesterday, and so I was behind the car, and and Steve was on this side, and another guy, another neighbor named Chase, was there talking. And and um, and I was talking to Chase a little bit about being saved. And I started witnessing to him some. And then uh, Steve walked up, and he said, "Hey, man, this being saved thing is awesome." And so I said, "I said, well, Steve, why don't you tell him about it?" He says, "Okay." And uh, he said, "Man, I thought that when Jesus died, he died for sins, but I thought it was for the sins of the people there." And he said, "I didn't know it was for my sin." And uh, he said, "He said, Chase, this you ought to get saved, man." He said, "He said I trusted Christ as my Savior," and, and he said, "It was so wonderful and awesome." And and he said, "A pastor's going to find me a church down in North Carolina." And uh, man, that's great. And uh, I laughed and I just was thanking God for doing that for me and, and how, how awesome it is. But, but what he was saying is he was going to AA and that's how we started talking about the AA thing. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. And he said, this is what I needed right here. Because God wants to save your whole life. He wants to save your whole life. Acts chapter 4. Let's look at this, please. Uh, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Verse 12. But we must be saved. We must be saved. Verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby, it says, see those last four words, we must be saved. God says we must be saved. Uh, the Bible doesn't say we may be saved or we can be saved. He said, no, you must be saved. You must be saved. Salvation is absolutely necessary. Um, if you would, turn in the book of John. We'll, we'll go to a couple verses there. Um, I just want you to see these. And, and um, 
Again, I'll, read, I'll just read some others, but it's just because of time. I'd love for you to turn to them all, but I want to make sure we at least go through most of this. It's so great, so great. Um, in John chapter 14, John chapter 3, I'm going to guess what verse? 14, okay, 14. Uh, John chapter 3, so, so he said you must be saved. If you remember in John chapter 3, it's all about Christ. It's actually a story about a, a good man, a religious man named Nicodemus, and he came to Jesus by night. And so this is a conversation that Jesus has with this very good religious man, the whole, the whole chapter. And um, in John chapter uh, 3, look at verse 14, verse 14. Now, Jesus is speaking, um, but he's actually speaking about himself, but it's the Old Testament. He's referring to the Old Testament in verse 14. He says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He said he what? Must. The Son of Man must uh, be lifted up. Jesus said, you must be born again. Well, he said here, the Son of Man, uh, he says, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. If you remember that, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a story in the Old Testament where serpent, people were sinning and, and uh, rebelling against God, and God sent, the Bible says, fiery serpents or poison serpents, and, and the serpents were biting the people, and the people were dying. Uh, the venomous snakes, and, and I used to always wonder as a new Christian, like, and, and so God says, make a brass serpent, like, a, you know, to, to uh, like the serpents that are biting, biting the people and killing the people, make a brass serpent and put it on a pole and lift the pole, and when people look to that pole, people can be um, uh, healed or saved, if you will, and I always wonder, why would you put the thing that's killing them on the pole? Because that's a picture of our sin. Jesus, the sinless son of God, took that nasty, dirty, venomous sin, and he, the Bible says he became sin. And the Bible says we must look to Jesus. And that's what that was. And, and so this is Jesus now in the New Testament talking to this man about this thing that happened a long time ago. And he said this had to happen. The, the, the Son of Man must be lifted up. If that didn't happen, every, everybody would have died. And he said, Jesus must be lifted up. Look at verse uh, 15 says, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Look at verse, uh, back up, look at verse 7. This, this is uh, uh, when Jesus was talking to this fellow Nicodemus, and, and uh, here's what he's talking about. In verse 7, he says, marvel not. The, you know, I know you're religious. I know you're a good guy. I know this, uh, this might sound foreign, but he said, but you've got to understand. Um, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. It's not a, well, you know, you can, you might want to choose this. No, you must be. Jesus said you must be born again. And uh, so you think about this. Uh, Jesus must die. That was in the Old Testament. And so he came to die. The Bible says the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He must die. Why must he die? Because we must be born again. We can't be born again if he didn't die. Why must we be saved? Why must we be born again? Look, look at this. Let's think about this. We must be saved because we're not saved already. Uh, hey, listen, I, I've met a number of people that, that just, they're born in a Christian family. Hey, listen, that doesn't save us. We're not saved already. You, you don't come under the umbrella of someone else or your family. Um, we're not saved already. If you're in John chapter 3 still, uh, look at verse 16, please. Verse 16. By nature, we're lost. And we're not only lost, the Bible says, we're perishing. We're perishing. Verse 16. Verse 16, please. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. In other words, if you don't, you will but have everlasting life. 
For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned when already. Do you know what we have to do as a lost person to go to hell? Just keep going. If nothing changes, we'll be lost forever. And the Bible says we're lost already. Look at verse 36, the last verse here. It says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. In other words, if you don't trust Christ as your Savior, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, the wrath of God is already on you. You're already lost. You're already perishing. And uh, hey, listen, that's why we must be born. The Bible says that Jesus must die. And he had to die because we must be saved. We must be saved. We must be saved because we can't, we're not saved already. And we must be saved because we can't save ourselves. What can we do to blot out our sin? Think about this. What can, what can you and I do to blot out our sins? What can, what can we do to save ourselves from sin? I mean, think about it. What, you know, uh, I mean, a lot of times I think people try to do this and absolve themselves of sin without really thinking about, well, how can you do that? What can we do to guarantee salvation and eternity with God? If you're in John chapter, uh, John, in the book of John still, flip over to John chapter 15, please. John chapter 15. Thank you for your patience. John chapter 15. You know what the Bible says, and I think you already got a hint, that uh, we can't do anything. There's nothing, nothing we can do. You know, and as I read about this as a Christian, I'm not discouraged. I'm more secure in my salvation than ever. There's nothing that you and I can do to save ourselves. Now, in John chapter 15, Jesus is not talking to a lost man. He's talking to a saved. He's talking to Christians. And uh, John chapter 3, he was talking to a lost man. John chapter 15, he's talking to Christians. Look what it says here in verse 4. Verse 4. He said, abide in me. And I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Look at verse 5. He says, Jesus said, now I'm the vine. Right? I'm the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, look at that, ye can do nothing. Okay, listen, we can't do the work of God. We can't do any of it on our own. And we, we can do some religious activity, but the work of God is not going to happen. The spirit of God and the work of God is not going to happen without Christ. We can't do it. He said, Jesus made it very clear. Without me, ye can do nothing. Who's he talking to? Save people. I mean, we have the spirit of Christ in us. We're guaranteed heaven. But Jesus said to Christians, if you don't have me, if I'm not involved, you can't do anything. Well, if that's true, which it is, what in the world can a lost guy do? You think if we can't do the work of God, down here without Christ? How in the world is a lost man going to get to heaven without Christ? It, it just is not going to happen. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. We must be saved because we're not saved already and we can't do anything to get saved. You think about this. We must be saved because God has provided salvation for us. Now just think this through. Why would God provide salvation if we did not need to be saved. It doesn't make any sense. Why would God do this if we didn't need it? 
The fact that God has, at such great cost, provided salvation is proof that we need it. God would not do this if, he didn't, if we didn't need it. Let me read, um, I'll tell you what, just flip over to Luke real quick. You're, you're still in Acts. Hold your place in Acts. Look over in Luke real quick. Chapter 24. Chapter 24. I think it's the last chapter, right? Luke chapter 24. Now this is, uh, this is a story after Jesus, Jesus died and he rose again. And um, not everybody knows about it yet. A couple of people do, but he, the Bible says he's walking on the road to Emmaus. And there's two of his disciples and they're just kind of scratching their head like, you know, we believed in Jesus and, and, and you know, we trusted him and, and then he died, and, and we don't know what's going on. And, and so Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus kind of started walking with them. And he said, hey, what's up, guys? And, and they just started talking. And they said, you don't know what's going on? Who are you? Where are you from? And, and so Jesus said, well, let's talk about it. And so the Bible says they're having this conversation, and Jesus is going through the scriptures talking about what just happened. It's pretty awesome. And they, but they didn't know who he was. And um, uh, in verse uh, 44, verse 44, please. And he saith unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you uh, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. After a while, he told them who he was, right? Um, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. See, we can't do that on our own. Do you, do you know that uh, when I used to read, try to read my Bible as a lost guy, it didn't make any sense. Do you know why? Because it didn't make any sense. Because I can't understand it without him. Verse 46, and he said unto them, thus it is written... And thus it behooved Christ, or that we're behooved. It was necessary. It had to happen. It was necessary. It behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. It was necessary. It had to happen. Jesus had to do this because we can't do it ourselves. We're helpless and hopeless without Christ. Uh, he said repentance and remission of sin. The, the, the thought there, remission of sin, is freedom, pardon, deliverance, forgiveness, uh, liberty from your sin. We, he had to do it because we, could, we can't do that ourselves. Salvation is something that is absolutely necessary. And another thing about salvation is it's necessary here and now. If a person is not saved, um, they need to get saved now. I mean, it's imperative to be saved. You can, it's not something you want to put off, and I know people do, but... You really, really, really don't want to do that. In Acts chapter 12, if you flip over there real quick, please. Or 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. So the Bible says in, in verse 12 that we must be saved. It also says, now notice this. It says, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none, uh, none other name, where? Under heaven. That's, that's there on purpose. God was very careful to choose his words. He says, there's no other salvation under heaven. That's where we are right now. Um, the Bible God, God puts these words in the word of God on purpose, in order, the way they are, uh, 
not in heaven, but under heaven. See, some people are some people are relying on getting saved after they die. You can't do that. There's, you're not going to, hey, where, wherever you're going, the Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die, and after this is the judgment. In other words, it's decided when you die. When you, when you leave this side of heaven, it's, it's, you know, all chances are over. Uh, it needs to be decided now. Salvation is given on this side of heaven, and this means that we must receive salvation in this life. And you're not guaranteed any other time. You're, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 1, it says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, uh, it says, For he saith, I have heard thee, in the accepted time, in, in the day of salvation, I have secured or helped thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Anywhere you read about salvation, God doesn't say, well, just go think about it. And No, no, no. He says, man, you need to get saved now. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 7, it says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today... If you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts today. Salvation is for today. It's for here and it's for now. The Bible does not promise a second chance of salvation. The Bible, hey, listen, the gospel is your hope. And your hope hangs on another breath. Um, God is infinitely merciful and desires salvation for all men. But these are his terms. We don't decide the terms. We don't decide how to be saved. You know, it amazes me how people think, well, I think, you know, and they're, it's like you want to decide how you're going to be saved. We can't do that. We, we can't decide, uh, you know, what God's going to accept. I think I think we're, our nation, our people are starting to get trained that way where you make the rules. We don't make the rules. God makes the rules, and, and salvation is salvation's a wonderful plan. Any plan that you and I come up with is not as good as God's, right? Salvation is absolutely necessary, and it must be received here and now in this life. And there's only one way of salvation. If you're in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other that pretty much that's that pretty much clears it up neither is there salvation in any other let me read you a couple verses in john chapter 10 verse 9 jesus said i am the door if any man enter in he shall be saved uh he said i'm the door in john chapter 14 and verse 6 jesus saith unto him I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. In Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 11, I, even I, am the Lord. Beside me there is no Savior. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5, he says, it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. It's the man Christ Jesus. Uh, hey, listen, there is no other way. There's no church. There's no religion. Uh, there's nothing that we can do. Jesus is the only way. There's only one way of salvation. Jesus is the Savior of the world and the world's Savior. Salvation is necessary. It must be, you must be saved here and now. And there's only one way of salvation. But the great news is everybody's welcome. Salvation is offered to all. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 again, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men. It's for everybody. It's not to a certain few. It's not to a, a select uh, crowd. It's, 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 it's for everybody. It's given among men. 
In, in other words, it's, 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 it's for everyone. The Bible says God loved the whole world and he gave his only begotten son. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it says uh, salvation is made available to all men everywhere. Romans chapter 2 and verse 11, For there is uh, no respect of persons with God. Isn't that great? There's no respect of persons with God. All races, all, all uh, rich, poor, there's no barrier. I love that thing that Brother Tim did the other day when he had everybody up here. And he had fat people and skinny people and, and uh, you know, uh, black people and white people. and every, But he said, the Bible says we're the image of God. See, we look at things, we look at things and divide people. God said, uh, 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 you know, we're all in the image of God. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. And salvation, uh, is the, the, the ground is level at the cross. We all have to come the same way. The Bible says for, um, uh, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Now, uh, um, they would understand that the Jews and, the, and, and the, the, the Greeks were very different. Different race, different nationalities, different, different backgrounds, different culture. Uh, you know, it was way different. And they didn't want to mix. And God says, listen, there's no difference between the Jews and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Hey, listen, uh, we, all go to, we all go to heaven the same way if we're going to go, and it's through Christ and Christ alone. And uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Nobody has a, nobody has a, uh, uh, you know, a special entrance uh, on their own. We all have a special entrance, and it's Christ. And here's another great, great thing, that salvation is absolutely free to you and to me. It cost a lot, but it didn't cost us. Somebody else paid for it. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, in verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given. You don't work for it. You don't earn it. Um, it's given. The Bible says, the gift of God. For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible says in John 10 and verse 27, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life. You can't pay for a gift. Right? You cannot, you know how they, those commercials, you know, they want to offer you something free. It's never free. Never free. Hey, listen, and you know, and I, I think that's something sometimes we have, uh, you know, people have doubts about salvation because there's always, there's always a string attached. And, you know, the older you get, the more you've been burned. Like, ah, you know, if it's free, it ain't no good. Right? If it's free, if it's free, it's not worth having. If it's worth having, you got to work for it, right? Hey, and that's true. That's true down here, but salvation is not that way. Amen. Somebody worked really hard for it. Somebody did a lot. It cost them a lot. It's not cheap. It's free, but it's not cheap. All we, all we can do is receive it or reject it. That's our choice with salvation. Titus chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 18, it says, For as much as ye know then, ye were not redeemed or purchased with corruptible things as silver and gold. Verse 19 says, But with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. It's still the blood. Can we just sing about it? It's still the blood that saves from sin. It's always been the blood to always be the blood. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 it says for by grace are you saved through faith 
and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. You and I can't do anything to buy salvation with anything. It has to be once and for all purchased and provided by the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this great salvation is available to anyone who will receive it. All we have to do is come empty-handed to the cross. Salvation is absolutely necessary. It must be received here and now in this life. There's only one way of salvation through Christ. Salvation's offered to all and it's absolutely free. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Hey, listen, it's, to me, um, I feel more secure in my salvation than ever realizing this. there's nothing I can do. There's, a, there's nothing I can do to get it, and there's nothing I can do to lose it. It's all him. And hey, listen, if you, if you are not sure, let me just encourage you today to do what God says and, and be saved today. Be saved today. You say, well, I'm not ready. Well, um, you really are ready. God's ready. God's ready to save you. Um, and, you know, uh, the more you think about it, the more you're just going to talk yourself out of it. Um, and you might not have another chance. Um, be saved today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you, and God, we're sure grateful for thy word. Lord, we're grateful, wonderfully grateful for your salvation in Christ. And Lord, I, I just, uh, today as a Christian, as we, uh, as we sang this morning, as Brother Rich taught about heaven and things coming up, uh, my heart rejoices because I know from your word that I'm saved. And, and uh, Lord, I know many others were doing the same. But God, I remember a time where I was on the other side and the thought and prospect of facing eternity terrified me because I, I wasn't saved. I, I knew that I was lost and in my sin. And God, maybe there's somebody here today that, that they're like I was and, and they need to be saved today. With their heads bowed this morning, let me just ask you this. Maybe you'd say, Pastor Carter, I'm not saved today. Or I'm not sure I'm saved. And I don't want to risk it. I want to get my salvation settled. I, I want to be saved today. And I'm concerned about that. Would you pray for me? Would you slip your hand up? Say, Pastor, pray for me. Anybody at all, Pastor, pray for me. Okay. Well, according to your acknowledgement, you're saved. And that's a wonderful thing. <clears throat> hey, listen, don't let this world beat you down because you are on victory side. And uh, maybe God helped you today with this. I know he did me. And maybe you have some people that you're concerned about. Um, with their heads bowed, you know, the thought hit me this morning. I think every Christian ought to have people that they're praying for to be saved. And I thought, why would I, not, why would I not have somebody on my heart that I'm praying for to be saved? And uh, God really convicted me of that this morning. But I want to spread the good news. I want to spread the good news. Let's stand, please, with our heads bowed. Maybe you'd like to come thank the Lord, pray. But uh, why don't you come as the Lord directs. Father, we please bless now our invitation as you've spoken to hearts in Jesus' name. With their heads bowed as the music plays, why don't you come if you need to?
Mike, can you sing that? Okay. Just go ahead and sing it. ship without <clears throat> the sail. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? You can't turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Without him, how lost I would be. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Tell you what, this is a <clears throat> it's a special thing to be saved. And I just, I was telling uh, telling Chase yesterday. I said I just have never gotten over it. Never gotten over it. Amen. We shouldn't, right? We should. Brother O'Pelt, good to see you, man. Amen. You doing okay? Good to see you back. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, um, we're going to have a Spanish service this afternoon, and a couple people got saved two weeks ago, was it? No, we had visitors. Oh, visitors. Okay. Amen. So, um, so that's going on, and we'll be back at our place tonight at 5.30. Amen. And uh, so some uh, young people came to me last, was it last week or week before? Last week? And they said, Pastor, we've been working on a song. So um, I said, well, let me hear it. And man, they're going to. So I said, can you guys sing that tonight? Can we go to sing that tonight? OK, all right. So uh, got to clear the channel. So we're going to sing it tonight. Amen. Uh, so uh, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about anybody that wants to serve the Lord, and, and especially some dumb old teenagers. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, <clears throat> let me uh, dismiss the bus workers. And thank you for serving the Lord, bus workers and bus riders. Appreciate them serving the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Okay. Do you have a question? Jada? Oh, no, okay. All right, John, would you just miss us in prayer this morning, please?